ready for a new episode of KP Talks Dollars and Cents. Learn financial literacy and get real-time updates on all things housing, finance, and real estate with your host, Kevin Perenio. As an owner and C-level executive for 20 plus years in finance, KP is here to serve you with all of his knowledge and experience. Whether you're a broker, realtor, or just interested in the economy, this is the podcast for you. So let's get started. Here's your host, Kevin Perenio. Hey, it's KP coming to you live from Newport Coast. Here we are, Carrington Charitable Foundation event. Of course, I'm the only guy in the dance floor. This is one of the most amazing charity events ever put on. So there's a hedge fund. The CEO is uh, Bruce Rose, uh, Carrington. Uh, they own Carrington uh, Mortgage, and they have uh, a bunch of real estate companies around the world, and. It's been a couple years because of COVID, but they put on this charity event at Pelican Hill and Newport Coast, always on Columbus Day. We're in Indigenous People's Day, if you if you will. And uh, right back there in the background, they are about to get started. It is one of the best run charity events I've ever attended. I've been here a few times. I want to thank Mike Conti at uh, Nationwide Property Appraisal for uh, for having me as this guest every year, they're one of our big AMCs. Um, you know what? There are a lot of wounded warriors that are here. They participated today. Um, they play golf today. Then there's a dinner. There's a silent auction. There's a, a, a grab bag for like wine, popping corks. And then there's a live auction coming up where all the ballers go spend like tens of thousands of dollars. Um, and so here's the board and they're raising money for uh, our wounded veterans and they offer them um, several steps in the process. So they offer them the chance um, to gain stability um, and then mobility uh, because many of them um, are para, you know, are, you know, paraplegic, some quadriplegic, some just have some, um, you know, they're amputees or, or, or such, but it's unbelievable. Give them stability, mobility, and then get them into the workforce transition them in and then give them a home uh, which is amazing because we're all in housing and what we do is we put people in houses but how about these men and women that served our country and put it on the line and gave a lot and um, they need some help and this this foundation is unbelievable it's sold out uh, they raise a ton of money I can't say enough good things about them um, my friend Nolan Turner uh, works there good dude so anyway, I think this, uh, it's very impressive, you know, all the stuff that they, uh, they do. So anyway, I, I know this is like a long, heavy lead in three minutes and I apologize for doing that, but this, this is work that this is, this is for our, our veterans and service members who literally put it all on the line and uh, can't say enough about this event. Okay. So if you've stuck with me this far and, and I hope you did and, um, I want to talk about what's going on this week. So we had a huge jobs report last week on the first Friday of every month. It's the October jobs report, which is really the second half of August and first half of September jobs. It's 263,000 jobs created. The participation rate actually went up overall, about 63.5%. Um, what was interesting is that um, the women's labor participation actually came down a little bit. And some of it has to do, obviously, with going back to school. But the overall participation rate um, went up. And so that strong, tight labor market, which is not giving up, the unemployment rate went down, gives the Fed the green light to hammer another 75 basis points at their meeting coming up in November. So I almost got hit by a golf cart. Just so you know, it's not a KP video if I don't almost get hit by something. Um, so... Uh, the Fed is going to hammer 75 basis point. There is the CME tool that shows the futures um, forecast of what the anticipated Fed's increase will be. And it's over 78% chance of being a 75 basis point hike. Now that could change. Um, we have a CPI, Consumer Price Index, 
reading coming out this week. We have a lot. We have a couple more inflation indicators coming out um, before the next Fed meeting. If it rolls over really hard and inflation starts to come down like really noticeably, which is not likely this next couple of reads, you might see um, the Fed back off, but I doubt it. Everyone's thinking 75 in November, 50 basis point rate hike in December, and then pause next year. That's what everyone thinks. So we shall see uh, what happens. We are data dependent, just like the Fed. Strong labor report, inflation coming down, but not quite fast enough. And the Fed is going to stay on the gas because they cannot risk having what happened uh, to Paul Vokler uh, in the 80s where he did a pause and then inflation retrenched and went up and really hammered our economy even worse. So they're going to stay on the gas until they whip it, even if they break something. Now, um, we've talked about them potentially breaking something. We've talked about that. We, uh, the UK pension fund almost you know, cratered last week. Uh, there were some rumblings about Credit Suisse. We'll see what's going to happen in our economy. Um, the only other thing that I will add is that um, in housing, it's very interesting. We're in a recession. Rates are high. People are not selling their house to pay for a more expensive house at a higher rate. They're not going to do it. 75% of people that sell their home buy another one. And um, they're locking down. So um, as our friend Logan Motoshami likes to call it, a mortgage rate lockdown. So we're going to watch how all of that impacts um, everything. Now, this administration, just less than a month out from a, um, a midterm, um, has been pushing um, a, uh, a community housing, fair housing agenda to try and serve the underserved and get them into houses. And what's interesting and what's not um, consistent with that message is that the Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac GSEs um, which are under the guidance of FHFA, are hammering repurchases. They are hammering lenders, including independent mortgage bankers, um, like our company or many companies, who are the ones in the community doing the work, serving the underserved. They're hammering us with repurchases. Even for loans that are performing, what, what do they see? Are they overstaffed? Are they not getting the communication? Or is there is there a message uh, gap going on? Is the FHFA not telling the GSEs to back off? Don't send back 2.3 billion in repurchases, the most in any six month period in years, by far than all of last year. Hammering lenders who were doing the work in the community, yet they're hammering us with repurchases and creating everybody's balance sheet. Now, I don't wanna sound desperate. We're gonna handle what we can handle. We're gonna do what we gotta do. We're not in a bad position as a company at PRMG, but I'm speaking on behalf of all lenders. Why would the GSEs be putting back loans out of repurchase that are performing coming out of a pandemic when people were hit with a health issue and their loans are performing with the wonkiest guidelines that were changing all the time at the same time under the directive of the FHFA who says that they want to serve the underserved. We're the ones serving the underserved. It's not the banks. It's not the hedge funds. They are not going to take losses. They're just going to shut down and move out. But we're the ones playing the infinite game, yet we're the ones being pushed back with repurchases. I think someone needs to do something. Um, Bob Brooksmith from the NBA is here. I might go ask him about it after dinner. Anyway, um, let's keep teaching financial literacy at scale. That's what originators do. Originators in the community. And remember, every first-time home buyer you serve and get under a roof because it's cheaper and better long term for them to own than rent, which rent is going up, by the way. Um, you'll see that in these inflation readings in the next couple uh, weeks. We are putting people in houses and we are the ones changing their lives for multi-generational net worth. We're the ones doing it. And if you put someone in a house, it's absolutely going to be a refinance next year. Certainly probably two or three loans total maybe a second refinance later you do rates in the high sixes maybe you do a two one buy down you want to clear them out of that they get some equity and you refinance them as the fed pivots over the next year or so and then maybe again if we go into recession and we see a fed rate cut cheers to all you doing the hard work happy columbus day happy indigenous people day thank you for this amazing event we're gonna go take care of our veterans right now have a good one cheers
You've been listening to KP Talks Dollars and Cents, a top-rated show for those who want to learn about the economy and mortgage environment. Tune in each week for more episodes, and please leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Kevin Perenio does not render or offer to render personalized investment or tax advice through KP Talks Dollars and Cents. The information provided is for informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, tax, investment, or legal advice. For more info, follow KP Talks Dollars and Cents on all of our social channels.